Narada said, O Brahma of great intelligence, O eloquent one, please tell us what happened after Daksha went home with great delight. Brahma said, Daksha Prajapati returned with pleasure to his hermitage and began mental creations at my bidding. On seeing the creation not increasing in size, Daksha Prajapati informed me, his father Brahma. Daksha said, O Brahma, Lord of subjects, these subjects are not flourishing. They are conceived by me, but they remain stationary. O Lord of subjects, what shall I do? How can they flourish themselves? Please instruct me in the means thereof. I shall certainly create subjects. Brahma said, O Daksha Prajapati, listen to my weighty words and carry out the direction. Shiva will bless you with welfare. O Lord of subjects, let Asikni, the beautiful daughter of Panchajana, the Lord of five tribes, be taken by you as your consort. Indulging in sexual intercourse, you can create subjects many in number in a beautiful woman like her. Then, in order to procreate subjects by way of coitus, he married the daughter of Virana at my bidding. Then, in his wife Virini, Daksha Prajapati begat sons named Haryashvas. O sage, all those sons were devoted to their father and followed the Vedic path. They did not have separate virtues and practices. Advised by their father, O oh dear one, the sons of Daksha went in the western direction for penance in order to create subjects, Rojini. There they came to the holy lake Narayana, where the celestial Sindhu has its confluence with the ocean. On touching the holy water, their intellect was sharpened. The dharma of holy ascetics eradicated all their impurities. For making progenies flourish, the excellent sons of Daksha, fettered by the command of their father, began to perform tapasya with steady resolve. O Narada, you came to know that they were performing penance for the sake of creation. You realized the intention of Vishnu and went there. O Haryashvas, sons of Daksha, how is it that you have begun your attempts at creation without seeing the end of the earth? So you ask them with respect. They heard what you said eagerly. With their minds fixed on creation, they deliberated on the proposal. How can a person begin the work of creation, putting faith in the gunas alone, if he does not know the command of the father of sacred texts, which imply turning back. Having made up their minds unanimously, the intelligent sons bowed to you and circumambulated. They then proceeded ahead on a path never to turn back. O sage Narada, with your mind fixed on Shiva and desirous of carrying out his orders, you went to various worlds without any mental aberration. When much time elapsed, my son Prajapati heard that the extinction of his sons was due to Narada and became distressed. He frequently mused like this, A multitude of sons brings only disaster. Daksha, who was deluded by Shiva's illusion, bewailed thus in many ways. I went over to him and consoled my son Daksha out of love and reminded him that fate is all-powerful. I pointed out the way to calmness. On being consoled by me, Daksha begot a thousand sons named Sabalashvas in the daughter of Panchajana. At the bidding of their father, they too reached the place where their elder brothers, the Siddhas, had gone, with the same steady resolve in the creation of subjects. At the very touch of waters of the Narayana lake, they too had their sins quelled and became purified. They performed penance, strenuously repeating many mantras and performing sacred rites. 
O Narada, you came to know that they too were attempting the creation of subjects, and you told them as before, mindful of the way of Shiva. O sage of beneficent sight, you showed them the path followed by their brothers. You went up to heaven, and the sons of Daksha went the way of their brothers. At the very same time, my son Daksha Prajapati saw many an ill omen. He was disagreeably surprised and felt distressed. As before, Daksha heard that the disappearance of his sons was brought about by you. He bewailed a lot. He was stunned, grief-stricken at the loss of his sons. Daksha was furious. He called you a wicked fellow. Fate caused you to go there at the psychological moment in the guise of one who wanted to bless him. The grief-stricken Daksha approached you with his lips throbbing with fury, taunted you and reproached you, saying, Fie, fie, and spoke to you. Daksha said, O oh, foremost among the base, disguised in the garb of a saint, what is it that you have done to these good people? my sons. To those engaged in good actions, the accursed path of a mendicant has been pointed out by you. Ruthless rogue that you are, even when they were not free from the three debts, you put obstacles in the path of their progress, both here as well as hereafter. He who renounces the world desiring salvation without repaying the three debts and departs from the house forsaking his parents surely courts downfall. You are unkind, shameless, distorter of the tender intellect of children, and a destroyer of fame. Why do you, a foolish fellow, move about among attendants of Vishnu in vain? Frequently you have committed offense against me, O basest of the base. Hence, roaming ever in the worlds, your feet will never be steady anywhere. Grief-stricken Daksha cursed you thus, you who are honored by saints. It was Shiva's power of delusion that prevented him from understanding the will of Ishwara. Without your mind being affected the least, you accepted the curse. All saintly Brahminical saints forbear thus.